The annual SA Disabled Golf Association's Provincial Challenge took place recently. Last year it was held at Swanthorpe Country Club, but this year Utenay Golf Club and the Eastern Cape played host to the event for the very first time in its history. So this is the first time we've come to Utena Golf Course and the main reason we came here is because one of our directors, Christo de Jager, who is also um, responsible for our Volkswagen sponsorship, invited us here and managed to get the community, the golf course, OK Mart, Kelston Motors to help us to get cheaper rates for everything to make it affordable for us to come. Because coming to this region means that 99% of the people need to fly in. Whereas if we go to Gauteng or, or Cape Town, it's, it's half the team that flies in. So we're really, really grateful to, to the Utenay Golf Course and to Volkswagen and everybody that's, that's pulled together to help us afford to come to this tournament. My involvement uh, really came in about 30 years ago when I uh, got to know, as you know him as Opa and I know him as Krista. Um, and uh, also from a younger age, uh, I had a family member um, who was also affiliated with Zaga, is uh, Graham Ghost, who lost the use of his uh, left hand, uh, or right hand, sorry, and he taught himself to, to uh, draw with his left. Was, uh, when I say draw, he actually became an architect and also plays a phenomenal game of golf. Um, myself, I uh, have had a few games with Graham, who also uh, whips me, and um, Opa uh, also. I, I cannot get to his, uh, to his level of golf. I mean, it's just uh, what the guys actually do with the disabled, uh, with the ailment, if I can call it that, uh, is it's beyond me. And, and an inspiration to, like I said, to myself and um, to everybody else in, in, the, in the world. Christo is a great friend from my, he's my Wednesday partner. We are unbeaten at the States. The op opposition can be very angry what I'm saying now. And Christo is a re reliable out for the club. He's always there, sponsor, help us with things, talk about everything, help us with cars, bring some prizes. So he's a great act and a great golfer. Situated just under an hour northwest of Port Elizabeth in the Eastern Cape lies Uton Hague. This prestigious event moving to this part of the country has provided a shot in the arm for Uton Hague Golf Club. So as club we're very proud and the first club in Eastern Province is absolutely an honour. And I can still not believe it and people didn't realise what happened to Uton Hague after this event was huge because of our water problem. So we use fresh water from the club to wear the greens and I think the greens is in a great, great condition. We start preparing the greens two months before the time. We couldn't do anything to the fairways. Luckily there was rain last week. So everything is in place, the halfway house, everything. It's an honor for us to do this. We want to be proud and you guys must be proud of you tonight golf club. The club has been able to face many of their challenges head on and rise above them. However, the global COVID-19 pandemic has seemed like an insurmountable obstacle for the SA Disabled Golf Association. COVID did throw us money in the works. Um, it, it did slow us down. You know, we've had uh, one major year and we built up to the major, so it slowed that down a bit. But we continue again. So, you know, we, through COVID, through lockdown, we were still planning meetings and, 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 and at various levels just to try and see when we got back onto the course, uh, what we were able to do in terms of the various levels of compliance. So we kept going. Um, it slowed us down, but we reworked the plans. And, you know, obviously with the schools being closed longer than that, it, it, it did, you know, throw some more spanners in the works if you had a whole lot of spanners with COVID. But, um, but we didn't stop. I mean, we kept on going, slowed down, and, and you know, we, we, we reworked some things. And, it, you know, it worked actually in our benefit because we had time to, you know, step back and re-strategize and how are we going to take it forward, out, you know, post-COVID and then going forward. So the impact on COVID to the South African Stable Golf Association, as far as the, the office goes, we, we cut down to... Uh, minimal in the office and most of the staff working from home. The academy were coming into the office so that they could study. Um, unfortunately for the deaf it's really really difficult because wearing a mask and being able to lip read was, was a real challenge for us. 
Um, at tournaments, we ensure that everybody is screened, we ensure that everybody is sanitised, um, and we we for the we also ensure that the health docs is done ten days prior to any tournament that we have. So the monthly provincial days we had in the past were actual you know physical days that you know you created a registration. You actually like a proper golf day uh, once a month and what we decided is to have a virtual day so we allowed the guys a, a period of seven days sort of from the beginning of the month to seven days later as a virtual day so they could play anywhere where they are and post the score as a Sadga provincial day as long as they played with another disabled person and that created an additional event. So, you know, when we were able to then have these physical provincial days like we normally used to have it, we had an extra one, which was a virtual provincial day. And that's still continuing. We're not going to stop with that. That's something we're going to continue with going forward because it worked very well. The COVID-19 pandemic has forced changes to just about every aspect of our daily lives. The SA Disabled Golf Association's first swing program was not immune to this and had to undergo a major overhaul to remain functional. The changes to the first swing program were probably our most dramatic during COVID, where we had to obviously close all our school sessions. And what we decided um, after numerous board meetings and restructuring the business for COVID is that we would cut down on the masses of kids and concentrate more on the talent. And because we could coach them um, singly at the golf club as opposed to go- group sessions, we, we've really turned our talent around and our young talent and they are showing some great results, starting to play in provincial days and we, we're really, really proud of them for that. Hopefully now in the second term we're going to reopen our schools and we're looking very forward to that. I must just mention as well that, um, especially in the deaf schools and St Vincent School in Johannesburg, is golf is the only sport that is actually being allowed due to being in the non-contact sport and we were lucky enough to have an outdoor putting area put up at the end of at the end of the year in, in disability month thanks to the central Gauteng golf union where they can actually play outside and not have to leave the the school to to do their sessions we we also have that in kwazulu natal thanks to that union who've already put up three indoor golf environments for the children so we can still continue at the schools um, obviously with social distancing and all the protocols that we need to keep in place the first wing program has been um, a casual uh, to a certain extent in terms of COVID. Uh, the participation, and I mean, it's really based in our school, so we weren't able to get the school kids uh, back on, on board. But we've been able to do limited coaching, limited kind of reach to some of, uh, to some of the schools that were able to give us participants. And it is growing. It continues to grow. Whether we like it or not, it doesn't get slowed down by, by the likes of COVID. And it's growing, you know, leaps and bounds every single year, every single month, actually. You know, and as, as we progressively get out of this thing, um, you know, it's just going to ramp up. We see the interest, you know, you open it for once and you say, come, you know, bring the school down and the whole school rocks up there, you know, instead of the 12 kids that used to come down there. So it's definitely, you know, growing in leaps and bounds. And, you know, we hope that, you know, once... Either, you know, the regulations are relaxed or we understand, you know, what the schools will allow in terms of sports participation for the kids. You know, we'll get a lot more than we've had in the past going through the program. But the program is still alive and well and kicking. We are just so excited about our first swing program, kids doing so well in the tournament. We've got John Tikotza, the blind golfer from Gauteng, who we've spent a lot of time on. He's one of those who we could concentrate on when golf was reopened. And thanks to our great coaches, Elsaby and Kirtley at Swartkop, he's come out tops. He's doing brilliantly over here. And we really are super, super proud of him. And we especially can't wait for him to actually beat his father, who has been a South African blind player for many, many years. Simum Dudu, he's also come through the program. He's still on the program, doing his learnership, playing like an absolute superstar here at, at Utenhaag and keeping everybody entertained. So he's really, we so proud of them. So it started with my dad. He started, he's also a blind golfer and I'm in uh, son's role models obviously his dad and uh, I have the same eye condition as my father so obviously I aspire to be like him and that's where I started to play golf and then Sadka is more than helpful with that they involved me in the first swing program at Swartkops where they helped with coaching and stuff just to develop me as a player and as a human being 
to become a better golfer. The South African Disabled Golf Association has been around since the early 2000s. The organization is instrumental in not only helping those with a disability play the game, but also encouraging everyone to take up the sport. Well, I found out about Sega through one of my friends who I grew up with. He's also one of the golfers who plays for Sadka and so he told me after after my accident, he, he asked me if I wanted to do anything, like I want to join Sadka. Um, so that's when I started becoming interested because that time I had nothing to do yet and I was still confused about what to do with my life and everything. So yeah. I started uh, golf after my accident. Uh, that was like things six or seven years ago, can't remember properly. Uh, but when I started golf, uh, it was during like my dark days. Just after my three months out of hospital, when I started meeting with people in work in Sedka, so I started uh, coaching and playing golf. Actually, when I yeah, heard about Sedka from Simo, I wanted something that's going to help me to learn more and fit in where I would like to learn how to empower myself through education and sport. So I'm currently doing an internship which helps me with um, it's a business management learnership. Yeah, it's a three year course I think, yeah. It's, it's big that you, you can be yourself in front of everyone and not be ashamed and not feel bad and not uh, work through to be comfortable. It's easy, you just feel free and then when you come to such uh, people that inspire you to be a be better person, you intend to become that person as well. Actually, I feel the sense of belonging because I feel I'm in a place where I feel free, where I can talk about everything. You know, I, don't have, I don't have to be shy or embarrassed about what happened. Like I don't have to, because most of the time I usually wear my jacket because I feel shy around people so here it's like I fit, I fit in you can say because I'm free like I could go talk about what happened with everyone yeah. Sadga attracts golfers from all walks of life. They bring together abled and disabled golfers to share their love for the game in the spirit of friendship and competition. I was actually first part of the South African Blind Golf Association and they informed me there's a different division as well which is called the South African Disabled Golf Association and he gave me contact numbers and I actually phoned and googled and that is how I actually got started to get involved with the South African Disabled Golf. This year was the first time that Sadka had a handicap league team which they entered and I was fortunate enough with the coaching and stuff I got from Sadka to make the team and participate in this able body league which was very fun. We played with guys from clubs around Gauteng which was very fun, played against them. I actually came second in the Ekelini stroke play at Glendover. I actually were the only disabled lady which have taken part in the C division. I actually came second in the C division. So yes, it's a major milestone for me in my life. I made 39 points. It was my first time in a competition to make that much of points. So yes, it was amazing actually. The challenges facing Pinar might be immense, but she's found a way to overcome them and still compete at the highest level possible. My guide is Yuri Murray. I would say he's one of the best visually impaired caddies, which there is. Um, he actually understands what it is to line somebody up who is visually impaired and what I can see more or less. So he knows according, you know, how I actually hit my shots as well, what way to line me up. And, you know, at the end of the day, he actually checks where my ball is going. He is my, actually my eyes at the end of the day as well. I think with his patience and perseverance, um, you know, assisting me and guiding me and trying to keep me calm, I think that helped a lot. Keeping calm is key, especially when competing at this level. And how you deal with the nerves the golfers face can be the difference between success and failure. But first, you have to be selected 
for your respective team. The weeks leading up to the selection of the Provincial Challenge team for North was probably the most stressful weeks I've had this year because, I mean, it is a dream for me to be able to be here and to have been able to make the team is really a dream come true and I must say I'm quite blessed to be here. To be selected for one of the teams is the ultimate achievement. Competitions like this are few and far between and being able to compete in an individual sport but in a team environment makes it extra special. It's a huge privilege for us to play competitive golf and to play under these conditions. Also, it's the only opportunity we have on an annual basis to play in a team format which is really enjoyable. So. On a personal level, it's certainly less pressure in terms of having to shoot medal rounds at the end of the day, and it's a completely different format. And it's nice to play with a partner, and you know, we're playing a similar format to the Ryder Cup, which is also a different format every day, and it's a fun format to play. The first day we played uh, Scramble, the whole tournament is match play. Every golfer plays off scratch throughout the tournament. And the second round was nine holes of foursomes and nine holes of better ball. And the third round is singles. The course was an unknown quantity to many of the players and was expected to test every aspect of their games over the three days of competition. We are eight in our course. We have four par fives, four par threes, and uh, ten par fours. The most difficult on this course is the last three holes. We call them Eamon's Corner, like in the Masters they call it. Hole 16, if you make par 17, 18, you're going to be one up, two up, and beat that person. Don't worry about the birdie. Sometimes you can play for a five. That's how difficult that hole is. With Utenhay Golf Club member Chris Dudiaga in their ranks, Team South was expected to have a slight advantage over their opponents. However, Team North showed there would be no pushovers, and with putts like this dropping, looked on course for back-to-back -back titles. Team South rallied though, as the first day finished with the teams tied on two and a half points each. Determined to bounce back after defeat last year to an inexperienced Team North, the South came out firing on day two. Of the eight points available via alternate shot and better ball, they managed to claim an astonishing seven points, which gave them a mammoth nine and a half to three and a half lead. Team North won the event for the first time in their history last year after a one-sided 11 and a half to eight and a half triumph. However, there would be no repeat of that this time round, thanks largely to Diarche. He secured three and a half points out of a possible four to play a starring role. With Team South needing just three points from the singles on Sunday, playing partner, leg amputee Kian Dry made a fast start in his match against Derek Swart, racing to a six-up lead after seven holes, before ultimately prevailing seven and six. First Swing Program Academy golfer Simo Mdudu also delivered a clinical final day performance demolishing blind golfer Leon Stradom 9 and 8. With the victory secured, there were also wins for Quirsi Janssen van Rensburg, Trevor Reich and Lance Dutoy, who almost hold this monster putt. The North did, however, manage a couple of consolation wins with Hanyu Besta and Rupert Fortman ending the weekend on a high. Team North's Johan Duploy also played some great golf en route to a share of the spoils with Brandon Shaw. Last year was a bit of a stinger for us. Um, to not to take the challenge last year. So we had a very specific task. Um, my team knows. Um, I love to say second place is first loser, but um, in the spirit of the game, I just want my guys to compete. So the thing that I'm really proud of, yes, we, we took the challenge, uh, but more than that, um, we did it in a very, very specific way that I'm very proud of. Well, coming down here, I didn't really expect to win per se, but uh, if I would have come out with a half, it would have been much more, even more impressive. And the reason being, you know, I had quite a number of newbies, uh, had a lot of youngsters, 
with no experience at all. We, you know, after our first round, we did very well to have come out with two and a half points each. And then the guys have made me proud, even though we have lost, but I'm still proud of them. What I love with this um, format is, is every single year we've got some great examples how we get individuals from first wing program come through. I mean, Simu on the final day to take it nine and eight. What a pleasure to see him out on the course. I think it just underlines the work of Satka and it's so great to be part of it. To have a, a captain that believes in you in such a way that it, even though I lost last year two games, he still chose me this year. That means he, he sees something in me and I'm happy because the team, the team, work together, we help each other, we stick to the plan and we had, we have fun. Even though we lose, we take it as a, a lesson. We don't feel down, but we make jokes about it. That's cool enough for me. John T. Quarter is still a youngster. He still has a long way to go and he needs a lot of encouragement from both people like me and playing partners, people like uh, Johan to encourage him because it's only been his first time and you know a couple more of these, I think he'll be great. For next year, definitely we will reclaim the trophy. It's the matter of getting the youngsters build their confidence a bit more and gain the experience. You know, I've, I've had them mixed up with the more older guys, but you know, a little bit more of these games again, they'll be fine. I mean, next year, definitely we will keep the, uh, the, the trophy again.